2022 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S all wheel drive. Is this electric car really the future for Volkswagen? Let's find out. <laughs> After Dieselgate, Volkswagen turned hard towards electrification to save face, to also reinvent the brand. And here we have one of the shining examples for Volkswagen with the ID4. Now this is the top line model around 50,000 US dollars. No, I'm not talking about an Audi here at 50K. We're talking about a Volkswagen mainstream crossover at 50K. And what does that bring you? Well, this is the top of the line Pro S model with the all wheel drive. Uh, and also has an additional package on top of that, which gives us the 20 inch wheels. It gives us the silver window surrounds, roof rails, as well as the blacked out roof. Uh, that's about a $1,500 package. And to me, just to get the 20 inch wheels, that's not a bad way to go. But also on this particular model, we have a very minimal, but striking front end, especially when the lights are low, you see the daytime running light not only wrap around the headlights, but it comes all the way across the front of the vehicle. I can't say grill because there's no grill unless you look down here, which there is a radiator for the battery or the, the liquid cooled battery. Volkswagen logo also lights up and it is striking and it is a really smart move for Volkswagen going forward to make that uh, their unique logo light up and get some additional tension out there on the streets. We also have adaptive headlights in here and I love the additional tension of this mesh pattern on the side of the adaptable headlights because it kind of fits with the mesh pattern of the grill at the bottom. Also that mesh pattern grill is seen to a certain extent on the new ID Buzz that was just revealed and we should be getting that vehicle here in the United States about maybe a year or so from the filming of this vehicle. We go to the side, one of the striking things about EVs in general, but especially this ID4, are the really short overhangs. There's hardly anything poking out in front of the front wheel and hardly anything poking out behind the rear wheel. Also in the all wheel drive model, we get a slight lift. I think it's about a half inch lift over the rear wheel drive model. And electrification cannot save us from the immense amounts of black cladding and black plastic cladding on these vehicles. And what's interesting here, so we have disc brakes up front, but Volkswagen has decided to go with the drum brakes in the rear. I don't know if this is a cost cutting measure, but they have gone on to say that drum brakes are better for regenerative braking. That might be true, but I definitely don't want drum brakes on the back of my vehicle. Now, speaking of the back, we have a very prominent uh, light bar that goes across. It's kind of the thing nowadays. And we have about 2,700 pounds of towing on this all wheel drive model. I believe it's about 500 pounds up from the rear wheel drive model. And that is standard on the all wheel drive model, that rear hitch. Lifting up the lift gate though, we have, I want to say it's around 30 cubic feet of space off the top of my head. And when you fold down the seats, you more than double that. Um, when we lift the floor here, we have, well, another floor because this is a false floor so that the seats, when they fold flat, if it's a flat floor all throughout. We lift this up. This is where um, the charging cable is that is inside my garage. Unfortunately, I have not been able to charge this vehicle from home. Uh, the charger won't let me, so I don't know if it's a defective charger, but when we're talking about the charging capabilities of this vehicle, uh, maximum DC charging is 125 kilowatts, and then maximum AC charging, let's say if you have a level two installed at your house, would be at 11 kilowatts. Um, and so what that looks like, 20 to 30 miles of range added from home if you have the top level AC fast charging. And if you just plug it into a 120 volt, you're probably getting like two miles of range per hour when you plug it in at home. Now lifting the short hood, this almost looks like a hood coming from like a minivan or something with how pudgy it is. Uh, and it is kind of heavy, so I don't know if they've used aluminum on this hood or not, but anyways, underneath the hood, you don't see any internal combustion engine here. What we have is an additional uh, electric motor to power the front wheels. That's around 107 horsepower and you made it to the rear motor around 200 horsepower that gets us real close to 300 horse in this vehicle and we have just shy of 340 pound feet of torque zero to 60 is going to bring this car in around five and a half seconds which is definitely a nice improvement over the rear wheel drive model battery pack size is around 82 kilowatts for gross and then usable is definitely going to be underneath that all wheel drive pro s comes around 240 miles and then you can get closer to 250 miles on the standard all wheel drive model getting inside the id4 
door is an eye-opening experience, mainly because it is so minimal in here. You don't have buttons, you don't have shifters, everything's very streamlined. It does seem very futuristic on the interior until you start interacting with it. But let's go over the materials first. We have plenty of glossy black plastic around the door uh, handle as well as the window switches and locks. We have more glossy black plastic around the cup holders, which you can take this middle portion out. The seats are really comfortable with this leatherette and you have ID4 kind of stamped. It's more like perforated onto the middle of the seat. We have a two-tone color going on, which I typically don't like brown in a vehicle, but it has not bothered me in this car at all. So we have a really attractive soft touch brown dash with a white stitching that goes all the way across. I think it looks really good. The issue is when you get to the bottom part of the dash, it's all hard touch and that doesn't scream $50,000 to me. The steering wheel has a great feel to it, has a nice girth, but we do have capacitive touch buttons on the steering wheel that I saw on the GLI that I reviewed earlier. And they're not my favorite. You do get used to them, but there's still no replacement for an actual physical button. Behind the steering wheel is a really small MID, and it is connected to the steering column, which at 50K, you don't get a motorized steering column. It's still push tele telescopic and tilting but connected to that mid is your drive select unfortunately drive select is completely hidden behind the steering wheel uh, so you have to kind of move to the side and contort your body to select gears if you're not familiar with the co controls and then behind the steering wheel is a tiny mid i would say it's like five inches big it's the smallest mid i've seen on an electric car uh, and it's not that it's bad quality or anything and it's really close to me It's connected on the steering column. The problem is is when I put my hand on top It blocks out the entire screen So I can't see how fast I'm going or I can't see any of the driver aids going on there speaking of driving aids They're all tied to the left hand side of the steering wheel and then your radio controls are tied to the right hand side of the steering wheel now to the center control area which takes a long time to get used to. There's a very tall learning curve to it. You have touch capacitive controls only, and that's for heating and cooling. But in the middle, you also have volume. But if you hold down the volume button, it doesn't raise the volume. You have to keep tapping it and that's just not good enough there's no replacement for a volume knob or tuning knob, in my opinion but volume knob is bare minimum we don't have that in here driving modes are are pretty straightforward sport mode has the most regen braking it's also the most sensitive when it comes to uh, the fueling of the electric motors but you can also customize your driving mode as well which i'd probably do if i were to own this vehicle i just keep it in comfort most of the time because i don't like the regenerative braking aspects in sport mode but moving away from the touch capacitive screen that is kind of laggy we move down to the bottom where the cup holders are you have a little pass through underneath of that but below the bridge we have a really good wireless phone charger that works with my phone many do not and then we have two usb c's up front and we have more cup holders in the center of this console which can be hidden with this accordion sort of closing door the panel roof on this vehicle is absolutely massive and it is one of the best i've seen in a car Get in the back seat. I do have a good amount of leg room. It's nice to have it soft backs to the seats in front of me as well as mat pockets on each side. Actually, there's an additional one that I just saw at the top of this seat. We do have a nice flat floor all the way across and like I mentioned earlier, we do have two USB-Cs. My, my daughter's been charging their iPads in the back or Amazon Fire, you guys know. We do have vents in the back, but they're right next to the USB chargers, which are really, really low. So that's unfortunate because you're gonna, that air is just gonna have to go a long ways to cool off or heat up the passengers back here. For 50K, it would've been nice to have heated rear seats, but we do have a nice cup holder armrest and then also a pass-through that goes through the middle. But the best thing about this back seat is definitely going to be the large panoramic sunroof, which you can just see so much out of and is one of the highlights of this vehicle for me. And as we back out of the review spot, we don't have a 360 camera also, which is tough tough pill to swallow at 50k but we do have really nice sensors proximity sensors at the back and the front that helps park in this vehicle but let's put it into drive and get this video review on the way so smooth so quiet and let's test out the speed bump here it is on the stiffer end the 20 inch wheels probably don't help in that regard but having a stiffer ride isn't necessarily a bad thing because it should give you a little bit more support when you push this 300 horsepower or so ID4 through its paces. And one of the things here as I slow this vehicle down, 
okay <laughs> what i just triggered it one of the things when i slow this vehicle down the brake pedal is like mashed potatoes you don't get any feedback it's really hard jeez louise it's really hard to modulate and smooth the braking experience down and just when you think you got it down let's say like i'm coming to a stop just slowly into traffic it'll <laughs> it slows down and you think it's about ready to come to a stop and then the brake feel goes away then you have to push into the brake pedal more and i thought okay maybe it's just me i'm weird i don't maybe it's this particular car and i looked in car and drivers right up of the, the all-wheel drive pro s model and they have the exact same experience with the brake pedal so that's unfortunate because the gli's brake pedal <laughs> and non-electric car was way better uh and then this fifty thousand dollar crossover the screen is pointed towards me a little bit which i appreciate it still feels somewhat far away but i do like the built-in maps that volkswagen has i think it has good detail and good resolution overall and when you slow this vehicle down and bring it up to speed it does have some that some synthetic sounds to it which i kind of like um, because they start kind of lower pitched and they raise higher pitch so it almost sounds like you're revving out an engine or a futuristic propulsion device and i'm just going to roll onto the gas here and it, yes there's no gas but <laughs> bear with me it is a very progressive pedal and it's not as punchy as i've driven in other electric vehicles so in order to get that full you know 300 295 horse out of it you really need to progress through the accelerator pedal in order to do that we're gonna get behind this bullet mustang which is one of the best six-speed manuals i've ever driven that car was just an absolute hoot with a five liter v8 anyways as i accelerate with traffic here as long as you don't have any bumps in the road you don't hear much i have a little bit of wind noise it's super windy today by the way if you couldn't tell my walk around but yeah it's a very quiet very solemn experience in here all right let's try to use as i'm driving right this is real world i need to figure out if this is an, a good experience for functionality so android auto pulls up really quick very snappy i do like that it is wireless right now as i'm charging on the wireless charger down there um let's see if i if i need to get to the climate control well there's a couple different ways i can press the square button to get in the menu i can press the climate button at the bottom or if i'm let's say i'm on my android auto i can get to climate by pressing the heated seats which bring me straight so that's that's how i prefer to getting to the climate because i've pressed this climate button before and it hasn't actually like worked for me very well so we got some green arrows here and i'm gonna sling this going in around 40 miles an hour or so okay <laughs> the initial the initial turn in gives you confidence and then you start feeling the full weight of this heavy electric vehicle through the turns i believe this weighs a little over 200 pounds more than the rear wheel drive model and one of the best things about electric vehicles is the instant response so i'm going to slow down here so i don't get too don't get too fast um and we have a red light anyways but i'm just going to hammer it and it, it takes off and i really like the responsiveness of it it's not perfect with its with its response i've driven in some other evs but it is it is good and this vehicle starts taking off real quick to be honest 300 the 300 horsepower that it has with over uh, 339 pound feet of torque or so i was expecting this vehicle to feel faster than it does it, but it, it doesn't it feels like a vehicle that has a uh, like a v6 in sort of that sort of power around 280 to 300 horse around three and a half liter v6 naturally aspirated but when you get on it you know there's very little delay kind of does exactly what you want it to unlike um, a traditional gasoline engine where you're waiting for the transmission to kick kick down a couple gears and even then it doesn't always pick the right gear so in terms of responsiveness this is still better than just about any other gasoline vehicle on the road doesn't mean it's as quick but in terms of hey if i need to get around traffic real quick it's going to to be a good receptor of my commands to it very quickly this vehicle is not perfect by any means the brake pedal is a little wonky i don't like touch capacitive only controls i don't like where the knob is located here because you can't see it i also don't like <laughs> where the mid is because if i put my hand up here i can't see how fast i'm going so a heads-up display would have been nice or uh, a, a bigger screen 
behind the steering wheel instead of one that's so close uh, to the actual physical steering wheel. So there's a lot of issues I have with this vehicle, but you can definitely get over them if you want the electric car experience. Maybe you don't want a Tesla or you don't want to wait around for a Tesla. I get it. I, I'm sure there's a waiting order on this car as well. So I think Volkswagen had a vision for the future and it's a good interpretation of where things are going of the market and for Volkswagen as a brand. It's just not the most functional. I don't even have a volume knob in here. I don't even have fan control up here either. Uh, there's no way for me to get to the heated seats or the heated steering wheel unless I go through the menus. So the climate control is very, very hard for me to accept and to live with on a daily basis. The, the rest of the touchscreen functionality I could get used to because once I have my preset set, I'm just going to be using Android Auto 99% of the time. That's just how I use it. But I know other people have bigger issues with the touchscreen than I do. It's just the touch capacitive controls are a killjoy for me. I do really like the minimal interior, the flat floor in the back, the amount of space this gives you. The huge panel roof is so good and brings in a ton of light into the cabin. But to be honest, this all wheel drive model doesn't even feel that fast. So you could definitely save, I don't know, 10 grand or so and go with a rear wheel drive model, especially if you just plan on, you know, your normal commute. Most of the time you're not gonna need to really use this full all wheel drive system unless, you know, you live in the, you know, the, the Arctic belt of America, of North America, then yeah, the all wheel drive could definitely come in handy. But electric cars in your area, their range is going to get, you know, smashed by the cold weather. So you definitely have your give and a take wherever you're gonna live. So for me down here in South Florida, definitely don't need all wheel drive. I'd be happy with rear wheel drive, save a bunch of money, have better range as a result. I was not expecting to review this vehicle. As you know, I don't really cover Volkswagen on the channel, but this is a great, uh, reference point because I just drove the BZ4X and I can't really talk about how that vehicle drives because I'm still under embargo at the time of this recording. But this vehicle feels heavy, it feels big, and the 300 horsepower and all-wheel drive looks good on paper, but to me it doesn't really translate to real-world performance as much as I would like it to. And that, oh, that brake pedal coming to a stop. Uh, it's just uh, Volkswagen, if anything you do to this view, if you do one thing, fix the brake pedal. To me, that's that's unacceptable for you to have a, a wish-washy brake pedal because that's a safety safety concern in my, my mind. Anyways, um, I'm gonna end it there. What do you guys think of the ID4 all-wheel drive Pro S model? A lot of features on it, a lot of technology and some of it just isn't very well executed. And thanks to Volkswagen for sending me this vehicle for review. Like I said, they're not a feature of the channel. Um, it was just kind of given to me and I'm happy to review them because it gives me an idea of where the rest of the market is as they're the second largest automaker in the world behind Toyota. But and got, for the 10th time, I'm cutting myself off. Uh, I'll see you down below as always. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more. Japanese and Korean auto news with maybe some Volkswagen sprinkled in. If it's given to me, I'm going to review it. Anyways, guys, I'll check you in the next one. Peace out.